Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And in this video, we're going to be discussing symbolism of the Great Seal of the United States. Symbolism of the Great Seal of the United States by Dr. M. Duril, a prophetic message of the future of America. Forward. This message will be a revelation of great importance to every American interested in the ideals, hopes, and aspirations of the founders of the United States. It will be found especially interesting to those who have wondered about the outcome of the present world conditions and the future of the American people. To say that the early American founders did not dream of establishing a republic that would endure and eventually grow into the ideal state of the golden rule would not do them justice, nor would it display an understanding of human nature. Any close student of man or history knows that man has always dreamed of living someday in a golden haven of peace, a Shangri-La. Without the belief that such a kingdom will eventually arise, man would have little incentive to pioneer strange lands, build cities and establish law and order to attain greater civilized privileges. There is much evidence, but greatly glossed over, that our nation was founded around this ideal. And it is quite evident that the founders were inspired by their vision of a golden age in which infinite justice would rule, and from this vision formed a governmental plan to serve as a foundation upon which a higher civilization could materialize. Around the time of our nation's formation, a number of occultists had settled in the New England states who, with their great spiritual wisdom, helped to formulate a plan of the New Republic. If one is trained in the ancient lore of arcane wisdom and can read the symbolism of the mystics, the occult story of the forming of the Union and the purpose for which our government was founded can be easily read. The vision which the founders of the nation saw has been amply recorded in the symbols of the Great Seal. The time is now propitious for the American people to see again the vision which played such an important part in the formation of our government. Therefore, in due humility, we present this vision as it may be read in the symbol of the eagle which adorns the Great Seal of the United States. Symbolism of the Great Seal of the United States the Great Seal of the United States is of peculiar interest to the occultists because of the number of mystical and occult symbols involved. Soon after the war, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson were appointed as a committee to prepare a great symbol for the new republic, and they employed a French West Indian, D. Cemetery, to furnish the design and also sketch any design suggested by the committee. On one of the original designs, there was displayed on a shield the armorial insignia of several nations who had peopled America. On one side was Liberty with her cap. On the other side, a rifleman in uniform with rifle in one hand and a tomahawk in the other. Franklin proposed for the device Moses lifting his wand, dividing the Red Sea, and Pharaoh and his host overwhelmed by the water. And for the motto, the words of Comrel. Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. Adams proposed Hercules, leaning on his club, virtue pointing to a rugged mountain on one side, and sloth, glancing at her flowery paths of pleasure, want only reclining on the ground, with virtue displaying her charm to seduce him. Jefferson proposed the children of Israel in the wilderness, led by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, and on the reverse, Hingus and Horsa, the Saxton chiefs from whom we claim descent, and whose political principles and form of government we have assumed. Franklin and Adams then requested Jefferson to combine their ideals in a compact description of the proposed Great Seal which he did, and this paper is now in the office of the Secretary of State at Washington. A number of other devices was suggested, but for some reason or other were rejected. After vainly trying to perfect a seal which would meet with the approval of Congress, Thomas, Secretary of Congress, finally received from John Adams, then in London, a simple and appropriate device, suggested by Sir John Presswich, who was a warm friend of America and an accomplished anti-Korean. It met with general approval, and in June 1782 was adopted as the Great Seal. 
Leaving out all reference to symbolism, it may be described thus. It consists of an escutcheon with 13 stripes, red, white, and blue, spangled with 13 stars placed on the breast of an American eagle, without support to denote self-reliance. In the eagle's beak, a scroll with the words E Porius Unum, as a crest over the head of the eagle, a golden glory breaking through a blue cloud with 13 golden stars, in its right talon an olive branch, and in its left 13 arrows. On the reverse side, a pyramid unfinished, in the zenith an eye in a triangle, surrounded with a glory, over the eye the words Anonit Queptus, which translates God has favored the undertaking. On the base of the pyramid, the Roman letters MDCCLXXI, meaning 1776, and underneath the motto Novus Ordo Seclorum, translated a new series of ages. The American Eagle is a bird peculiar to this continent and therefore showed what country the seal was speaking of. The shield with the 13 stripes represented the 13 colonies, the protection of America. The cloud of glory with the 13 golden stars represented the mystical light which surrounded the forming of the United States, a fulfillment of prophecy. The arrows held in the right claw represented the power of war, while the olive branch represented peace, to be used impartially. The symbolism of the Great Seal is of interest to every citizen of the United States, for in it is concealed some of the knowledge of the early occult organizations in America. The shield with 13 stripes meant not only the 13 original states, but also Jesus and the 12 disciples, who acted as a shield to the states, which had been formed in the name of God. The 13 stars on a blue field, with a golden glory breaking through a cloud, show the light of God shining through the 13 representatives of God. Jesus and the Twelve Apostles, upon the eagle bearing the shield. The eagle, with its wings spread, is the messenger between earth and heaven, carrying the prayers of the new nation to the cloud of glory, representing God. In its left talon is an olive branch representing the peace desired by the nation, but in the right talon is a bundle of 13 arrows representing the forces and power of protection of Jesus and the Twelve. The scroll inscribed, In God We Trust, in the eagle's beak represents the power of God, which the new nation believed protected and upheld them. On the reverse side, the unfinished pyramid represents the unfinished nation, which was dedicated to God and which, under the eye in a triangle and surrounded by the glory, would eventually result in a new perfected age. On the base of the pyramid, the words Novus Ordo Sacrorum translated a new series of ages, which signified the beginning of a new period in the manifestation of man. The words Adonic Queptus, which translates God has favored the undertaking, show that God was the leader and the director of the new age. The eye represents the all-seeing eye of the God-man which would be opened in the new age when the pyramid had been completed by the triangle or unity of the mind, body, and soul of the nation. When the eye is opened, the glory or light of God shines through man. The most vital symbol to us now is the unfinished pyramid of 13 steps or stages. In the original design, it was intended for 13 stones to be shown in each step. If we multiply 13 by 13, we have 169. The beginning of the nation was 1776. Add 169 to 1776, and we have 1945, the year when this nation will have reached as high as it can go under the old order. In 1945, America will be confronted with grave decisions. On the outcome rests the fate of the nation. It will either fall into oblivion through materialism or ascend to the triangle suspended above in which shines the light of horror. The Ancient Days if this happens, then a great spiritual nation will be evolved to lead the rest of the world from the darkness of negation into which it will have fallen. Each and every one can do their part to bring about the descent of the great spiritual light. Again, there are 13 steps in the pyramid and 13 original states. The states multiplied by the steps give us the same significant 169. 
There is no question but that the year 1945 will be of great significance to the American people. Our democracy will stand or fall by our attitude and actions in that year. Let us go forward, strong in the faith of our founders that America and her principles shall survive. The Great American Eagle the eagle was mystically chosen to represent the formation of our democratic life. In the ancient legends, the eagle is the material representative of the spiritual bird, the phoenix, the symbol of immortal life. In the great seal of the USA, we find the eagle representing this life as the carrier of the banner of peace, power, unity, and liberty into the age of universal happiness. The spreading wings of the eagle represents the life of the American spirit. They are so shown to represent that the sole purpose of the eagle is that it shall fly when the proper time comes from the old order into a new. The eagle wears an inscription shield upon which is the insignia of his new birth. The 13 bars on the shield represents the 13 original colonies, and in the Union the life of the eagle began. In the eagle's right claw is shown an olive branch, a symbol of peace, which he holds as a power in the world that the spirit of life may grow. In his left claw he clasps a bunch of arrows, a symbol of power and war, which he wields to protect the weak that they might grow and become strong. There are 13 arrows and 13 leaves on the olive branch. Thus, it is shown that there will be 13 times, 13 periods or years of time in which the new republic must grow before entering into the greater life. The white head and the nine white feathers in the eagle's tail are symbolic of the ten sephiroth of the ancient Kabbalistic wisdom, representing the spiritual tree of life. The nine feathers represent the formulated principle of creation, and the head the spiritual intelligence which shall guide the Republic through the thirteen stages of its growth and preparation for the spiritual kingdom, shown as a heavenly glory above the eagle's head. The scroll inscribed, In God We Trust, in the eagle's beak, represents by whose power it was believed that the nation was formed and would be protected. The eagle's head is turned to the right towards the cardinal direction of the midday sun. The eagle is thus shown with his wings spread, ready to fly when the sun reaches the meridian. The cloud of glory of 13 golden stars, with 12 forming an interlaced triangle around the 13th, represents the great seal of Solomon. It has been said that this represents the equilibrium of the macrocosmic and the macrocosmic worlds of creation within an infinite universe. We can see within this brilliantly illuminated cloud the promised Christ kingdom of 12 states centered around one head. It is curious to note how often the number 13 appears as an important part in this symbolism. It is evident that the number 13 must contain some mystic or spiritual relationship to the order and movement of the universe. We observe Jesus had 12 disciples, forming 13. Odin brought 12 priests or garters to Europe from Asia. There were 12 stones in the breastplate of the high priest of Israel. The stones in the plate forming 13. The 12 houses of the zodiac controlled by the sun forming again the number 13. Many more could be cited, but these are sufficient to suggest the mystic 13, which had a significant part in the forming of the USA. Now, having learned the interpretation of these symbols and have gained something of their meaning, we may reconstruct the vision as it is represented by the symbols of the great American seal and read its message in the following manner. From the ashes of the immortal phoenix, there appeared a baby eagle. Thirteen twigs were collected together to form the eagle's nest, and in the warmth of the morning sun, the eagle thrives and becomes strong, and the twigs became a sturdy tree of many branches. And when the sun arrives at the meridian, the immortal spirit will be revived and the eagle will fly into the sun. How you may help in the establishment of the new Christ kingdom. You may help in establishing the Christ Kingdom in America by enlisting in the Army of Light in its war against darkness and negation. Your individual efforts are needed in the building of the new kingdom and its citizens will be those who prepare for its coming and aid in its establishment.
If you desire to help build the Christ kingdom and aid in the establishment of the brotherhood of man on earth, you should be interested in the New Truth Movement, founded by Dr. Durill. He, having contact with the Great White Lodge, the Elder Brothers of Man, is an agent for the foundation and the great spiritual kingdom of the coming golden age. In order to contact and instruct the truth students of America in the coming of the Christ light, the Brotherhood of the White Temple Church was formed. The church is intended to bring together all sincere seekers who desire to establish the golden age of the Christ kingdom on earth. We know that this can only come about when men create an inner harmony and understanding and reflect the Christ light into the outer material world. Durill, founder of the Brotherhood, has for many years made an intensive study of the Hebrew Kabbalah, ancient symbolism, and related subjects. He has studied both the Old and New Testament in the original and found many errors in translation and interpretation. By applying his knowledge of the Kabbalah, Hebrew, Greek, ancient symbolism, etc. to the Bible, he has been able to arrive at entirely new interpretations of a vast number of most important passages. By this interpretation, all of the hidden mysteries of the secret teachings of Jesus are made clear and one becomes able to live the true Christ life. With a correct interpretation of the great truths of the Christian Bible, a clear understanding of the lost mysteries which Jesus taught his disciples is obtained and one is able to live the true Christ life. Living the Christ life includes a working knowledge of the operative laws which Jesus taught his disciples but did not teach the multitude. In Matthew chapter 13 verses 11 through 16, Jesus says, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, By hearing he shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall not understand, and seeing ye shall not see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. We are thus told that Jesus taught in two manners, a mystery teaching for the initiated, and a simple ethical code for the mass who were unable to comprehend the mysteries. The Brotherhood believes that the time has now come for the mysteries to be revealed to the mass, and for this reason has formed the church as a medium through which the things hinted at in the Bible may be revealed. Each word uttered by Jesus has two meanings, one open, the other concealed. When we are able to understand that the concealed meaning is the important one, we have an incentive to attempt its understanding. Duriel knows that the time is at hand for the establishing of the brotherhood of man and the Christ kingdom on earth. The second coming of Christ will only manifest when man establishes a harmony of purpose, which will create a vibration attuned to the Christ consciousness. The Brotherhood of the White Temple Church was founded to aid in bringing about this condition of harmony of thought and consciousness. Our desire is to bring to man a plan of life through which all good things can manifest in his life and eliminate the chaos which manifests as negation, disorder, inharmony, poverty, war, and hatred. It desires to bring about the harmony of purpose, which is the manifestation of the true brotherhood of man and oneness of purpose with God's plan. Poverty, sickness, and harmony and hate are all manifestations of the lack of understanding of God's law. The true workings of these laws will enable each of us to take our place in the Christ's kingdom. The church is founded for one purpose only, to enable the individual to arrive at a greater understanding of the divine law so that he may take his place as a member of the Christ's kingdom on earth. If you wish to gain a greater understanding of the divine laws of Christ's kingdom and learn his inner and deeper teachings, write and ask what you may do to help in this great work. Write to M. Durrell, 
Spiritual Advisor, Brotherhood of the White Temple Church. A message to all those desiring to become teachers of spiritual truth. The time is at hand for a spiritual revolution to take place in America, and the Brotherhood is preparing to assume a prominent place in the new order, which will emerge from the present chaos. The Brotherhood of the White Temple, a channel of the Masters, has been chosen as one of the paths through which sincere, selfless seekers who are willing to dedicate their lives to the service of mankind may prepare themselves for the coming of the Christ Kingdom. It is said that many are called, but few are chosen, for only the few are willing to labor in the spiritual kingdom, perhaps scorned by many, but always holding fast to the divine principles of truth. For those who do the work of the divine, a place will be prepared in this new age, the seventh cycle. The time has come to prepare. Let us light our lamp so the bridegroom may be guided to our inner spiritual chamber are holy of holies. It is not necessary that you be an advanced student of truth. Remember, it is not you that speaketh, but the Spirit of the Father that speaketh in you. Every effort you put forth to aid some struggling brother aids your own growth. The Brotherhood has been given the command by the Great Ones who guide us to call all those who are willing to devote their lives to the service of mankind and the divine principle. The invitation is extended. Would you grasp it? Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any hear, let him open and I will come in. Will you answer? It makes no difference whether you are young or old, man or woman. There is a place for you in the plan. The efforts of all working in harmony will bring glorious spiritual power and light to the world. Write me, telling me about yourself, your studies, your training, your desire, and you will receive instructions as to how you may become one in the Christ kingdom. Do not delay. Remember, many are called, but few are chosen. Work while there is light and the way is open. In cosmic harmony, do real. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description below. Thank you very much.